the UN broke a ceasefire in Syria is clearly not working, Patrick. How much is this due to that foreign involvement that some are claiming is coming from the Gulf states and other countries? Well, I think it's important to just point out from the start that uh, the UN broken peace deal is foreign involvement to start off with. This isn't a case of the Syrian people um, you know, sitting down and negotiating by themselves. This is Kofi Annan uh, and various officials coming in and imposing uh, you know, a, a peace plan and a treaty upon the, the Syrian people. So, so I mean, uh, fr from the start, it's important to point out that you know, foreign intervention is happening already uh, in Syria. But Patrick, don't, uh, you, I, need, I don't it, you need a mediator between these two factions, though? The time has come for some mediation, hasn't there? And that's exactly what the UN's trying to do, getting a, a balanced reaction, balanced part played from both sides there in Syria. I, I think um, one of the problems with the, uh, the Annan peace plan from the start is that it's fetishized peace over really trying to uh, allow the Syrian people to resolve the issue. In, in many ways, in the UN coming in in this way, it's distorted the conflict. It's bottled up a lot of tensions that, uh, you know, often do have to try and resolve themselves in some quite unpleasant ways uh, sometimes. It is, unfortunately, as we've seen uh, in the Arab Spring last year, only through um, struggle of the people in, in those countries uh, that co uh, can really bring about lasting change and the necessary battle of ideas about how Syrian society should, uh, could take place. You can't always just sit all the parties uh, round the table. In particular, you can't in Syria because it's very hard to know exactly what constitutes the opposition uh, and it's a very fragmented opposition and I think that's what one of the reasons why it's very hard to exactly pin down what happened with these explosions and who's responsible for them it's, it's uh, you know what we are seeing here is a very messy increasingly complicated kind of civil war and unfortunately the uh, the Anam plan is distorting that rather than actually I think making things better um, also, uh, the U.S. is saying that uh, al-Qaeda militants are operating in Syria. Um, obviously, the U.S. has been stirring up anti-Assad uh, sentiment, saying that they would like to see a regime change there. Do you think, in fact, Washington's actually playing in the hands of al-Qaeda uh, with this? Well, in some ways, they, they are. I mean, al-Qaeda hasn't had a history, really, of um, uh, terrorist at at attacks in Syria. I think America likes to use the kind of the bogeyman or the spectre of al-Qaeda uh, to, to its own interest to a certain extent and to kind of play that up. Uh, whether or not that is the case in, in this situation, it's a little bit harder to, to tell. Um, certainly, um, there, there's a tendency from Assad, uh, which you know uh, uh, you, you can understand, to now cast these um, situations as very much terrorist attacks rather than uh, an organised body of individuals that are trying to fight uh, in a civil war or for democracy and, and freedom in Syria. But it's very, as I said, it's very hard to understand exactly who this opposition is, exactly who brought, uh, brought about these ta attacks. The blame game is going on at the moment. There's a lot of fingers being pointed. Uh, and, and I think actually, in many ways, uh, the response is about who is likely to be uh, to blame for this, whether or not you know, it's Assad's uh, uh, it's forces, as some people have suggested, whether or not it's Al-Qaeda, whether or not it's a breakout group from the Free Syrian Army, it tends to say more about the people commenting on the issue than it necessarily does about uh, the situation on the ground. You said earlier this I is a matter to wait for the uh, mm -hmm. sorry you, you said earlier this is a matter for the Syrians to sort out and there's no excuse for this mm -hmm. sort of uh, foreign intervention we're seeing at the moment but we are seeing are we not a humanitarian crisis unfolding very similar to what we saw in Libya and that of course prompted that NATO led uh, uh, intervention why aren't we seeing the same now based on that humanitarian reason? Well I uh, I mean, one of the reasons why it certainly shouldn't be the case is that Libya is no better off now than it was under Gaddafi. What you've effectively had, got in Libya now is, is a vacuum with a, a cherry-picked government by the West uh, and, and Libya's splintering off into city-states. It, uh, you know, they're no closer towards uh, being able to determine their own futures and really have a free uh, society in Libya than they did, you know, a, a year or so ago. Uh, and I think, you know, people know that Syria is a much larger country. There's much more kind of war 
warring factions. It could become internationalised far more than, than Libya. Uh, and, you know, tr trying to have a NATO intervention in there will be very messy. I think that's why there's uh, a lot of fee faith being placed in the Assad, uh, it, sorry, in Kofi Annan's uh, plan, even though from the outset it was very much seen to be, you know, just a pragmatic attempt of what else can we do? I mean, as, as um, Annan said from the start, if we take the peace plan off the table, what else could we replace it with? Just briefly, from the start, it's always... Mm -hmm. Okay, just, just briefly, Assad, he's introduced reforms, he's managed to stay on in power so far. Far, how do you assess mm. his position? Could he actually uh, survive all of this and remain at the helm? Well, I, I think one of the things, now we have the, the monitors on the ground, the UN monitors on the ground in, in, in Syria, effectively they, they are getting much better at building up effectively a, a dossier of information about what uh, Assad is doing. Uh, I think that could, at some point down the line, lead uh, to, to greater excuses for, for intervention. But, but Patrick, moment, only though, 300 observers mm -hmm. at the moment, only 300, not all of them there, meant to be uh, deployed by the end of the month, 300, that's too little too late, isn't mm -hmm. it, just briefly? Uh, well, uh, no, it's 300 too many. I, I don't think that the UN observers should be meddling in, in, in the uh, businesses of uh, business of Syria whatsoever. So, so uh, no, I, 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 I disagree with that point. I think in terms of the future of um, uh, Assad, what these peace plans are doing in fetishizing peace over a resolution of the conflict, they are effectively uh, saying, you know, uh, we need stability, even if it means uh, Assad can remain uh, in power. And I think that's deeply problematic. Patrick Hayes, thanks very much indeed for your thoughts. Reporter for online British magazine Spite, live in London. Thanks for your time.